Magandang tahali, Pilipinas. Siyempre po, maraming napuyat sa atin dahil pinanood po natin ang inaugurasyon ni uh, President Biden ng uh, uh, Amerika. At kaugnay nito, uh, our President Rodrigo Roa Duterte sends his warmest greetings and the best wishes to the 46th President of the United States, Joseph Joe Biden, and to his Vice President Kamala Harris. America has once again shown us how deep are its roots in democracy. It has always been an exemplar to the world, and today it has reassured the world that its people remain committed to peaceful electoral transitions and the noble principles of representative democracy. We in the Philippines look forward to continuing our long-standing partnership with the United States in working together for a freer, more peaceful world. We're confident that President Biden will wear his new mantle of leadership with pride and with due regard for the hopes and aspirations of the rest of the world. Pasensya na po, pero Ingles para maintindihan po ng mga Amerikano. Tulad na una ninyong narinig sa aking press briefing, kahapon ng unang araw ng ocular inspection ng cold storage facilities no, na gagamitin natin para sa mga bakuna. Kasamang pinuntahan po ng ating vaccine SAR Secretary Carlito Gavis, ang Zwilig Pharma. Makikita ninyo ang larawan ng Zwilig sa inyong uh, screen. Ito po sa Paranaque. May kakayahang ang cold rooms ng Zwilig Pharma na matatagpuan sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Pilipinas na makapag-hold ng 650 million vaccine doses no? habang ang walk-in freezers ng Zwilig na may temperatura mula negative 50 hanggang negative 25 degrees ay uh, nakakapagtago ng 40 million doses. Meron din silang ultra-low freezers na mayroong kakayahan na mag-maintain ng temperature na negative 80 degrees. Kaya nitong magtago ng 6.5 million doses. Ito po ay para sa Pfizer no? na kinakailangan nga ng negative 70 to 80 degrees. Nagpunta rin po ang grupo ni Secretary Gavis sa Unilab sa Binyan, Laguna. Kasama ito, kasama ito para masiguro ang kahandaan natin upang dumating na sa pagdating ng bakuna. Kaya, kaya ng Unilab na mag-accommodate ng uh, hindi bababa sa 5 million doses at any time na may temperaturang 2 to 8 degrees. Ito po yung para sa mga Chinese vaccines naman. No? Uh, tignan natin ng uh, mga larawan. Sinek din po ni Secretary Gavis ang cold storage facility ng IITM na may kapasidad na magtago ng vaccines na nasa ultra-low at 2 to 8 degrees na temperature requirements. Ganito po ang proseso ng vaccine distribution na mula cold storage facility hanggang sa recipient. Pagdating po uh, sa Pilipinas, syempre po naka-refrigerated yan sa aeroplano, susundin po yan ang refrigerated na mga trucks din. Darating, dadalin po muna yan sa DOH Rented Private uh, Warehouse or sa RATM. Ito po muna. Ha? Unahin muna natin yung sa cold storage facility na nangangailangan po na negative 2 to 8 and uh, negative 20. No? Pagdating po ay dadalhin sa DOH Rented Private Warehouse. Pagkatapos po, padadala pa, padadala through refrigerated uh, vans then sa regional warehouse at hub. From the regional warehouse at hub po, dadali niyan sa mga city health offices at saka sa mga provincial health offices na meron din pong mga refrigerator. No? Tapos, dadali na po natin yan sa rural health units, sa mga city health offices na naka-refrigerator yan hanggang ibigay po sa ating mga kababayan. Para naman po dun sa Pfizer na merong cold storage facility na hanggang negative 70%, Uh, Siyempre po, kinakailangan ng refrigeration yan sa aeroplano pa lang at pagsundo, refrigerated uh, uh, truck din. Yan naman po ay dadalin kaagad sa rented private warehouse. At um, pagkatapos po sa rented private warehouse, diretso na po sa private. No? Kasi yung mga negative uh, 70 po talaga ay mga privado po yan. No? Ay dadalin po natin sa regular health regional health units at saka sa city health officers, sa mga hospital, sa implementing units at ibibigay po sa ating mga kababayan. Paalala lang po, ang scenarios na aking nabanggit ay maaari mag magkaiba base sa mga serbisyo na maibibigay ng vaccine manufacturers such as but not limited to direct distribution to the service delivery sites, presence of a distributor in the country. So ito po yung in default kung wala pong pangako na delivery doon mismo sa lugar na kung saan ibibigay ang mga bakuna. May mga kumpanya po kasing nangako ng ganyang serbisyo. Tulad ng aking sinabi, pag-usapan natin ngayong araw ang update tungkol sa telecommunication sector. Pasensya na po kayo no? at syempre yung usaping bakuna, eh, naantala itong paghimay-himay natin ng report ng National Telecoms Commission. Pagkatapos po natin himayin ng report, ay kasama po natin mamaya si uh, Yusek Entik ng DICT para naman makuha kung anong evaluation ng ating DICT ukol dito sa report na ito. 
Now, sang ayon po sa isinagawang speed test ng UCLA, ang global leader sa internet testing, data and analysis, ang internet speed ng Pilipinas ay nag-improve ng 297.47%. Ang tinutukoy dito ang internet average download speed for fixed broadband at 202.4% naman ang improvement sa mobile broadband. Now, ang makikita nyo pong 297.47% increase ay increase mula ng simula po ng administrasyon ni Presidente Duterte July 2016 hanggang Disyembre ng 2020. Pero kung titignan natin yung pag-increase naman mula nung nagbabala ang presidente nung kanyang SONA ng 2020, 20, no, July 2020 hanggang Disyembre ng taon nito ay eh nagkaroon po ng 25.4% increase na sa bilis ng fixed, fixed download speed. No? Okay, pagdating naman po sa uh, mobile, download speed sang ayon po sa NT sa UCLA nagkaroon po ng 202.41% mula nung July 2016 hanggang December 2020 pero yung increase po niya mula nung nagbabala ang presidente sa kanyang SONA nung July 2020 hanggang December 2020 ay 32.7% increase ito ay uh, para sa buwan ng Disyembre noong nakaraang taon kung ikukumpira noong July 2016 speeds. Okay. Uh, pagdating naman po sa average download speed for fixed broadband, ito ay nag-improve from 7.91 Mbps noong July 2016 at naging 31.44 Mbps noong December 2020. Um, kung ikukumpira po yung increase mula July 2020 to December 2020, ito po ay 25.4% increase. Ang average download speed ng mobile broadband ay nag-improve din po ng 7.44 Mbps noong July 2016. Ito po ay naging 22.50 Mbps noong December 2020. So, pero kung ikukumpira po yung increase from July 2020 to December 2020, ito po ay 32.7% increase. Ngunit siyempre po, no, hindi tayo titigil dito. No? Kinakailangan po, eh, mapakita pa rin natin na Kapareho naman tayo o kapantay, kapantay natin sa bilis ng internet ang ating mga karatig bansa dito po sa Asia. Ito pong lumalabas. No? As of November 2020, ang Pilipinas ay number 29 sa limampung bansa sa Asia. No? Pagdating sa download speed ranking sa fixed broadband. Ang mga kapitbahay natin, karatig bansa sa Asia tulad ng Singapore ay nasa unang pwesto. Ang Thailand ay number 2. Ang Malaysia ay number 11. Ang Vietnam ay number 14. Ang Laos ay number 27. Siguro naman po, dapat kapantay tayo ng Vietnam man lang. Sa mobile broadband ay nasa number 34 po tayo out of 50 countries ang ating speeds sa Asia. No? Pagdating sa fixed broadband ay number 20 po ang Pilipinas sa apat na put anim sa bansa sa Asia Pasipiko. At number 22 naman po tayo sa mobile broadband sa apat na put anim na bansa sa Asia Pasipiko. Well, uh, dapat po talaga na mag-improve pa ang serbisyo ng ating mga telecom sa provider dahil lang nasabi ko na nga po nung nag, uh, nagkaroon tayo ng espesyal na edition ng uh, presidential brief, press briefing dito sa mga telcos, hindi naman katanggap-tagap na nahuhuli tayo sa ating mga karatig bansa at kinakilangan ang, uh, tayo ay magnais na maging world class pagdating po sa telecommunication. Okay. Um, Pag-usapan naman po natin ang permits, towers at fiber optic. No? Ang monthly average ng permits na inisyo noong 2019 ay 63 sa globe at 50 sa smart. Pero matapos magbigay ng direktiba ang presidente na pabilisin ang pagbibigay ng mga permit ng mga lokal na pamalaan, tumaas ang average monthly number of permits na naisyo mula Hulyo hanggang Disyembre noong nakaraan na taon. Nasa 552.65% ang itinaas sa globe dahil 348 permits ang na-issue at 194.33% or 97 permits naman po ang na-issue sa SMART. Ang nais po nating makita sa lalong mabilis na panahon, e eh ano po yung karagdagang improvement sa speed ng ating uh, internet at doon sa ating cellular service ngayong ginawa na ng paraan ng ating presidente mismo ang pagpapabilis ng pag-issue ng mga permit sa pagtatayo ng mga telecations towers. Dahil dumami nga po ang nag-issue ng permits, tumaas din ang bilang ng towers na naipatayo. 
Merong 2,939 additional towers ang naipitayo mula Hulyo hanggang Disyembre noong 2020. Makikita naman sa susunod na infographic ang cumulative number of additional towers na naipatayo na po na Smart, Globe at Dito. Ang total po na uh, naitayo nila to date in December is 22,834 towers. Kaya nga po, titingnan po natin kung ganong um, porsyento ng pag-improve naman po ng speed ng internet at syempre yung quality ng cellular service. Pumunta naman po tayo sa fiber optic rollout. No? Meron ng uh, 543,740 cable kilometers na laid out sa buong bansa as of 2020. Sa taong 2020 lamang, meron pong 144,551 cable kilometers ng fiber optic na na-roll out. Ang total change po niyan ay 36.21% percentage change. COVID update naman po tayo. Ito po ang glo global update ayon sa Johns Hopkins. Higit 96.7 million or 96,000 million 877,591 na bulula ko ha. Ang tinimaan ng COVID-19 sa buong mundo. Nasa 2,071,892 po katao ang uh, binawian ng buhay dahil sa coronavirus. Nangunguna pa rin po Estados Unidos na mayroong mahigit 24.4 million ng mga kaso at 405,630 deaths. Pangalawa pa rin po ang India, pangatlo pa rin ang Brazil, pangapat pa rin ang Russia, at panglima po ang United Kingdom. Dito po sa Pilipinas, naku, tumaas po ang ating mga aktibong kaso. Meron na po tayong 28,904 na mga aktibong kaso sa ayon po sa January 20, 2021 data ng Department of Health. Ang mabuting badita na lang po sa mga tumaas na active cases, 92.5% ay mild at asymptomatic, samantalang 4.5% po ay critical. Nasa 2.6% naman po ang severe. Nasa 466,993 ang kabuuan bilang ng mga gumaling or 92.3% recovery rate. Samantalang manungkot namin binabalita na 10,000 at 42 tao na po ang binawian dito po sa atin ng buhay dahil sa coronavirus. Nasa 1.98% po ang fatality rate. Nakikiramay po kami sa lahat. Makikita po natin sa infographic, no? yung surge dito po sa huli ng ating kurbada. Sayang po, no? pababa na po sana talaga, pero sumipa na pataas. No? Ito po yung talaga naman pong kumpirmadong surge dahil nga po sa kapaskuhan. Ang hindi pa natin nakikita kung gaanong ka tinde ang magiging surge dahil po sa translasyon. Ulitin po natin, habang hindi pa po nababakunahan ang mga Pilipino, kinakailangan pong limitahan ang mga magkakasakit sa atin, magagawa po natin yan sa pamamagitan ng mask, hugas at iwans. Tignan naman po natin ang availability ng mga kama para gamutin ang mga magkakasakit ng critical at severe. No? Well, bahagyang bumaba po ang available na ICU beds. Yung mga nakalipas na araw, 60% po yan, naging 59, ngayon 58%. At yan naman po ay dahil nga po sa surge. No? Sana po hindi pa dumami ng ganung kadami ang mga magkakasakit na seryoso. Pero sa ngayon naman po, nothing to worry about dahil marami pa po tayong ICU beds. Sa isolation beds, meron pa po tayong 63% available. Mukha naman pong hindi dumami ang nahospital sa ating mga isolation beds. Sa ward beds, 73% po ay available. So ang tumaas lang po talaga ay yung mga na-ICU. At ito naman po ay dahil nga po sa surge na ating na-oobserbahan. Sa so ventilators, 79% pa po ang available. Okay, dito po nagtatapos ang ating presentasyon. Gaya na aking sinabi kanina, kunin po natin ang panig ng DICT dito sa report ng NTC. Dilinawin ko lang po, no? Ang NTC po ay quasi-judicial pero it is an attached agency to the DICT. So kasama po natin ngayon, walang iba kundi si uh, DICT Undersecretary Manny Kaintik para sa kanyang obserbasyon at evaluation dito sa naging ulat ng NTC sa Pangulo uh, bilang uh, tugon doon sa sinabi ng ating uh, Pangulo na kinakailangan mag-improve ang ating uh, telecoms. Pero bago po natin tawagin si DICT Manny Kaintik, ay uh, wini-welcome ko po ngayon sa ating briefing room. Walang iba po kung hindi ang batang-bata, ang gwapong governor ng Samar, wala pong iba kung hindi si Reynolds Michael Tan. Governor Tan, welcome to our briefing. 
at kasama rin po ni Governor Tan ang kanyang Provincial Planning and Development Coordinator, si Mr. Nicasio Bermejo. Welcome po to our press briefing. So, Yusek Kaintik, ano po ang ibalwasyon, anong tingin ng DICT sa naging uh, ulat ng NTC at anong magiging rekomendasyon nyo kay Presidente? Dahil ang sabi ng Presidente, um, baka po kakanselahan niya mga prangkisa kung hindi po mag-improve ang serbisyo ng mga telecoms. The floor is yours, Yusek Kaintik. Good afternoon, uh, Secretary Ari, and thank you for inviting the DICT in this press briefing. Uh, I just have a couple of uh, comments on the extensive report that our friends from the National Telecommunications Commission have done. So, una sa lahat, I want to highlight the fact that there has really been uh, an increase in the power rollout. And I think this is in positive response to the joint memorandum circular that we have done as well as the President's directive in easing up the permits for the towers. Uh, in that regard, you have seen a dramatic increase in the tower rollout. And what does that imply? That will increase the extent of the, the, extent of the coverage of the towers, of the mobile operators, in providing internet. Pag dumami din po ang kanilang tore, gaganda din po ang signal ng ating masasagap sa internet because we're only as limited also with the extent of which the towers are are prevalent. Ang challenge natin would still be the uh, fiber rollout, yung land base, which kami dito sa DICT, starting, uh, starting last quarter, have already been looking at improving also, creating also an equivalent joint memorandum circular for easing up the, and regularizing uh, the uh, permits needed for the fibers naman. Uh, ang importante kasi dito, ang inihiling sa atin ng ating mga partners uh, are the telecom providers is number one, make it uh, firm, hindi pa bago-bago, make it easy, hindi, hindi mahirap, at saka mas, mas mura. We need to say hindi pa iba-iba ang mga rates sa mga LGUs. We in the DICT are a firm believer of making easier, cheaper, and faster uh, processing of such necess necessary permits for the fiber rollout. So the fiber is also needed in, in, in this telecommunication because right now, because of the pandemic, nasa mga kabayan tayo, and we want it to be easy. So thank you so much, uh, Secretary Ari. And we hope that uh, with our increase and in improved regulations in government, eh, walang reason ang telecommunication sector na hindi nila mapalaganap ang kanilang mag-roll out at mapaganda ang kanilang services even better. Thank you. You say can take, but I need your recommendation dahil I intend to make this presentation to the President for our uh, weekly meeting uh, bago po mag-taping for the Talk to the People. Sabi po ng Presidente, shape up or ship up. Ano pong rekomendasyon natin sa ating presidente given this report from the NTC? Our recommendation is to continue that firm stance and push for the telcos. Uh, and on, on our end, kasi sa government, hindi naman tayo nagkulang sa pagbigay ng suporta sa ating mga telecommunication uh, company. So we should not... Uh, we should not lessen our pressure on them. In fact, we should even uh, intensify the push. But at the same time, we should do our best as government also to alleviate yung, yung problema doon sa mga permits. Ang challenge na nga ngayon is okay na sa towers. Ang ating sunod na kailangan ayusin, uh, kami dito sa DICT are on the land-based fiber rollout. Okay. So walang reason na mag-lessen uh, mag ng pressure pero dual dual work. So para maging malinaw lang po ang recommendation ninyo, wag naman mag-ship out pero kinakailangan ipagpatuloy ang shape up. Tama ba 'yun, Mr. Yes, Secretary Harry, Secretary Harry, yes. Tuloy-tuloy ang push, tuloy-tuloy ang pressure ni President. Hindi do not relent on the press. Okay. Full for press kumbaga. 
Okay. Maraming salamat, Yuseka Intik. Please join us for our open forum. Simulan na po natin ang open forum with our colleagues in the Malacanang Press Corps. Yusek Rocky, please. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, uh, Secretary Roque. Question from Evelyn Quiroz of uh, Filipino Mirror. You recently offered your office as a venue for discussion between Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana and UP President Danilo Concepcion over the issue of the DNB's abrogation of the 1989 agreement between the two. Have they accepted your offer? Alinawin ko po na what I offered was my good office. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang yung physical office ko. Pupwedeng sa labas po kung saan pakakainin ako ni Presidente Danilo Concepcion. Pero so far po, ang tumanggap lang po ay si Secretary Delphine Lorenzana. Hindi pa po ako nakakarinig ng kahit anong komento kay President Danilo Concepcion. Natatakot po siguro pakainin ako sa labas. Uh, for uh, Yusek uh, Manik Intik po, question from uh, Evelyn uh, Quiroz ng Filipino Mirror. Ito po tanong niya, the Commission on Audit has flagged the Department of Information and Communications Technology for using only 1.2 billion pesos out of its uh, 6.2 billion funding for 2019 for a very low fund utilization rate. According to state auditors, a, a low allotment utilization rate would mean slow program project implementation rate. Can you explain the DICT's inability to maximize the utilization of its budget? Thank you po. Uh, una, bibigyan ko ng konteksto ang report. Ay, una sa lahat, papasalamat kami sa COA for pointing out these deficiencies. Uh, we, well, we, the DICT, uh, recognize the importance of audit reports because it actually helps us pinpoint the, the, the problem. But to provide context, the, the, the 2019 budget was delayed. It was na-delay ang pag-approve ng 2019 budget. Ergo, everything else followed. But that is not an excuse. But if you look at the COA report, it also identifies in, 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 in its full report that they, they helped us uh, pinpoint that there are inefficiencies in the procurement and project ex implementation, execution. So this is, has been prevalent for the past three, four years. So what we, what we have done with the Honasan uh, leadership is to look at those inefficiencies and fix them. So we spent the time, fix them, so that the projects get implemented. Kasi hindi pwedeng bili ka ng bili, pabit ka ng pabit, hindi naman may implement. Take for example the Wi-Fi. For the past five years, from 2016 to 2019, uh, four years, it has only been averaging an 800 per year deployment. But since we rectified the execution and then we started procuring again, we were able to roll out 4,300 Wi-Fi sites in just one year. So you see, we we fixed the problem in the implementation and then we procured. The 2019 budget was extended till 2020. And the last uh, report that we have right now, the full utilization of the 2019 budget extended to 2020 is now 80%. So my answer to this is that the DICT is rectifying its programs, always constantly checking the effectivity of the programs. We need to be able to manage our vendors, our partners, our execution partners, so that we attain the economic outcomes we desire. Hindi ibig sabihin that hindi natin uh, i-rectify ang ating mga nakagawi ang mga mali. Thank you po. Sir. Okay, Yusek Asek, uh, uh, Yusek Karaki, if I may add, no, um, Secretary Wendell uh, Avisado also sent us a note saying that despite the ongoing pandemic, government's actual infrastructure disbursements from January to November 2020 exceeded the infrastructure program level. In particular, infrastructure disbursements as of November 2020 totaled 727.9 billion, which is 4% more than the program level of 699.2 billion. So in expect din po natin uh, uh, yung spending for December 2020 will accelerate compared to the earlier months since uh, line departments try to fast track the implementation of their programs and settle their outstanding payables before the end of the year. In addition, yung big spending departments such as DPWH and the UTR have also committed to implement the respective catch-up plans for 
2020. Ibig sabihin, wala naman pong overall um, underspending uh, pagdating po sa infrastructure projects. Thank you, Yusak Rocky. We go to Melo Acuna, please. Magandang tanghali po, Secretary Harry. Uh, ilang Good. punto lang, ngayon may bago ng Pangulo sa Estados Unidos. Magbabago po kaya ang foreign policy ng Pilipinas tungo sa Estados Unidos? Well, uh, sa akin naman po, uh, ang ating uh, relasyon na panglabas, eh, pareho naman pong consistent ang ating uh, uh, polisiya. Ang presidente po ay uh, sinusulong ang isang independenteng panglabas na relasyon na ang inuuna po ay interes ng uh, ating uh, bayan at mga sambayan ng Pilipino. Ganun din po mga Amerikano. Isusulong nilang pang nasyonal nilang interes at uh, uh, syempre po ang pagkakaibigan, naririyan, pero kinakailangan po ang parehong bansa ang isulong ang kanilang mga interes. Opo. Uh, nabasa ko po sa Philippine Star yung report tungkol sa 2.34 billion uh, shelter projects sa ARMM. Uh, tila hindi po yata natapos yung mga proyekto pero nagkabayaran. Ito po ba ay sisiyasati ng tanggapan ng Pangulo sapagkat mayroong kampanya ang administrasyon laban sa korupsyon? Yung po mga programa na hindi na ipatupad nung panahon pa ng ARMM. Ano po kaya ang sitwasyon? Siyempre po, titignan natin yan. No? Nabasa ko naman po ang star kanina so hindi po yan lumabas kanina. Siguro yung mga kakalipas na araw. Kahapon no? po. So um, kukunin po natin yung artikulo na yan at uh, I'm sure po ang presidente dahil ang prioridad niya ngayon sa natitira niyang termino ay uh, um, itigil na itong problema ng korupsyon ay pag-aaralan po ito. Maraming salamat po. Para po kay Under Secretary Manny Kaintik, magandang tanghali po. Good afternoon, sir. Opo. Ang tanong ko po ay may kinalaman sa monitoring ninyo ng telcos. Baka meron pong overloading sapagkat kahit po uh, sabihin natin meron sila mga fiber optics, pag nagsama-sama po yung uh, gagamit ng internet, eh bumabagal kung hindi napuputol. Baka po parang jeep ito na overloaded. Ano po kaya ang magagawa ng DICT? Thank you, uh, Sir Melo. Tulad na sinabi ko nga kanina, ang kailangan is pagpalaganap pa ng marami pang fiber cable. Cable muna tayo. Kulang pa. We are actually a very big nation. 400,000 square kilometers tayo. No? So malaki-laki pa, malawak pa. And our fiber cable rollout is still minimal. So kailangan mag-double, double, triple, quadruple time pa ang mga telcos sa pagpalaganap. Tayo sa government, ang may tutulong natin is hindi magkaroon ng sagabal sa pag-rollout na yun. Doon sa Tory, ramdam na nila. Hindi na sila pinapahirapan. Pero kailangan pa po ng kable. Sa ganun, pag dumami ang kable, hindi tayo na overloadan. Para lang boost yan, sir, sa nakikita ko sa drawing sa picture mo. Pag kulang ang boost, <laughs> salamat uh, nakatayo na tayo lahat. Salamat po. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank Salamat, you. Melo. Thank Salamat, you. Yusek. Thank you. Back to Yusek Rocky, please. Secretary, question from uh, uh, Virgil Lopez. Ng, uh, sir, sandali lang po. Ha? Yes, question from uh, Virgil Lopez ng GMA News Online. Some senators daw po have pushed for the passage of the bill seeking to amend the UP Charter Act of 2008 to require a prior notification of the entry of police and military units in all UP campuses. Is the palace for or against this bill? We, we always uh, respect the uh, prerogative of uh, our legislators to uh, legislate uh, national policies. No? So sa akin po, that seems to be a reasonable proposal, but that has to be enacted po into law. Que que question from uh, Chris Jose Remate, Remate Online. Reaksyon ba ng pa sa panawagan ng Duterte Youth Party List sa DND na kansilahin na rin ang agreement nito sa PUP katulad ng ginawa sa UP? Sinabi ni uh, Congress uh, Mencardema na ang UP DND Accord at PUP DND Accord ay klarong-klaro na special treatment na inaab Buso na sa tagal ng panahon, sa tingin ninyo, susuportahan din ng Pangulo na makansila ang PUP-DND Accord. Sa reaction po, eh, karapatan naman po yan ng uh, Duterte Youth na magsalita. No? Pero yan po ay opinion ng Duterte Youth. Thank you, Secretary. 
Uh, maraming salamat. Uh, Trisha Terada, please. Hi, good afternoon, Spokes. Spokes, um, doon lang po sa usapin ka rin ng bakuna. Nagkausap na po si Senator Laxon and si Secretary Galvez. And um, as how Senator Laxon described it, they had a good discussion or meeting. And he shared that after the meeting, he advised Secretary Galvez that some people um, to be to be more careful, to be extra cautious um, about uh, possibly some people taking advantage of his credibility. What can Malacanang say about this, sir? And has Malacanang considered this possibility? And any sort of steps that you're taking to actually protect um, Secretary Galvez? Hindi ko po alam ko anong sinasabi ni Senator Laxon, but I guess. You know, in our earlier talks with um, General Galvez, I did warn him that uh, although si General Galvez is a technocrat, no, she's, he's not just a military leader. He has advanced uh, management uh, degrees from Australia, no? and he is a true blue technocrat. Ang warning ko sa kanya, do not think that the release of information is equivalent to communication. Iba po yun. No? At sinasabi ko nga, ang warning ko sa mula't mula, eh talagang ipupolitika po yan dahil wala na po talagang mabatong kahit anong issue sa administrasyon ni Presidente Duterte. Ngayon patapos na po ang termino ng ating Presidente. So I think um, he now knows what I mean. That the release of information does not necessarily mean it is strategic communication. No? So anyway, yun lang po ang aking reaksyon. Mm -hmm. Sir, yung usapin po na UP um, Accord, I'm sure nakarating na po ito kay Pangulo. What's, what does he think of the appeals, the sentiments of the UP community? Will he be open to listening or at least to meeting with um, uh, President Concepcion? As I said po, itong bagay na ito, hindi na po kinakailangan makarating sa level ng Presidente. Uh, although we do have the principle of qualified political agency, sa level na po ito ni uh, Secretary Lorenzana. And as I have said, no, I have offered my good offices. Uh, Secretary Delphine Lorenzana has accepted and I continue to await a uh, word from President Danilo Concepcion. Mm -hmm. Sir, sa ibang topic naman, numbers have gone up the past few days. Sinabanggit niyo nga po yung surge. How will this factor in the quarantine classification? Are we going, can we expect that there will be areas Well, um, I di ko po po pwede pangunahan ng IETF. No? Pero paulit-ulit ko po sinasabi, data analytics will dictate ko ano po ang ating quarantine classification. At sa tingin ko po, nakita nyo naman yung availability of um, um, beds natin. No? Dalawa lang pong lugar ang critical. No? Ang nasa moderate po pala, hindi pa critical. No? Wala pa sa red. Yung CAR at saka yung Region 11. So, yung mga areas na po yun, eh, binabantayan po natin dahil pag umabot sa critical yan from, uh, from uh, moderate, eh, syempre po, uh, met meron tayong dahilan. Pero ang uh, quarantine classification nga po will not really be on a national basis. It will be in a local basis. No? But as I said, i-discuss pa po yan dahil so far hindi pa po napipresent ang DOH ng latest analytics nila. Baka mamayang hapon po, no? today is the 20... First, ah, hindi pa. Baka in the next meeting pa yung data nila. Next? Secretary Roque, order yes, please. Yes, uh, Yusek. Yusek, uh, thank you very much, Trish. Tapos na ba si Trish o may question pa? Oh, uh, may internet interruption lang. So may isa pang question ata si Trish. But meanwhile, let's go to Yusek Rocky, please. Ako, nawala na rin sila pareho. <laughs> Yusek Kaintik, ba't ganito? Wala rin si Yusek Kaintik. <laughs> Hello? Yes, okay. Yusek Kaintik, um, you witness po kung ano nangyayari dito sa ating press briefing. Ano ba ho talagang dapat gawin natin para hindi naman kami maputol? Puro Metro Manila kami, napuputol kami. Yeah. Can, we, can I ask you, Yusek Aintik first? Yusek, oh, you've witnessed yung ating problema even in our discharge of our official functions. No? Lahat kami nasa Mani Metro Manila, pero ganito, napuputol. Ano ba ho? Kailan ba ho mapititigil itong ating hinagpis na napuputulan tayo ng internet, Yusek Aintik? Yusek Aintik, aputol ka rin. Eh, wala. Putok din ata. Yusek Kaintik? Wala. Oh, well. Any of the two? Trish Terada or 
Asak Rocky or Yusek Kaintik, please. Nako, patay na. Yusek Kaintik. Yusek Kaintik. Yusek Kaintik. Talaga bang... Yusek Kaintik, wala kang ano, audio. Okay, let's try Trish again. Nako, anyway, sa aking report po kay Presidente sa lunes, sasabihin ko po ang nangyari on the day we rendered a report on the telcos na nawalan po kami ng connection sa lahat. Um, hindi ko na alam kung nasan tayo. Virgil? Um, okay? Ayan, ayan. Ayan ko yung ano, yung... Yung uh, ulitin ko yung question ni Virgil Lopez, Secretary? Yes, go ahead. Opo. Ang tanong po ni Virgil Lopez, uh, some senators daw po have pushed for the passage of the bill seeking to amend the UP Charter Act of 2008 to require prior notification on the entry of police and military units in all UP campuses. Is the palace for or against this bill? We leave that to the wisdom of Congress because that's an issue of national policy. Although, as I said, it sounds like a reasonable legislative proposal. Opo, yung uh, second question po niya, reaction niyo sa panawagan ng Duterte Youth Party List, question naman po ni Chris Susena, Remate Remate Online. Nasagot na po. Niyo po sa... Nasagot na po yan. Already answered. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we go to Pia Ranada. Sir, I think hindi po natapos si Trish Ranada, Secretary. Uh -oh. Trish, are you here? Yes, sir. Hi, sir. Yes, uh, okay, my question, ahead. sir, earlier po, uh, bago po tayo naputol, um, yung numbers po have gone up these past days. Yung so, binabanggit nyo nga pong, Serge, how will this affect or factor in the quarantine classifications? Can we expect, sir, kagaya po nang nabanggit nyo rin last time about sa new normal, meron na po bang lugar na mapapalagay under the new normal or will this take a while since IATF still crafting itong do's and don'ts po? Yes, two points, no? Sinagot ko na yung first point mo. What will determine mm -hmm. the new classification is still the attack rate and the critical care capacity. So far, dalawang rehiyon lang po ang nasa moderate or papalapitan mm -hmm. ng moderate yung isa. No? Ang nasa moderate na po ngayon ay ang um, CAR. CAR. Mm -hmm. Oo. Tapos ang uh, Region 11 po ay eh, papalapit na rin sa moderate. Pag umabot po yan sa critical, well, that will really be a factor in escalating community uh, um, quarantine classification in these two areas. No? Pero hindi naman po national. No? Um, mm -hmm. Pangalawa po, uh, in principle, magkakaroon po talaga tayo ng new normals, pero sa hanggang ngayon po ay hinihimay-himay pa rin uh, kung ano yung mga do's and don'ts sa mga areas na ito. At syempre po, dahil may surge, parang titignan po natin kung meron pa rin tayo mga lugar na wala po talagang active cases for, the, for an extended period of time. Mm -hmm. Sir, may mga panawagan po ngayon ng wage hike amid yung rising prices of um, livestock of, 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 of yung mga food uh, needs natin, sir. No? How does Malacanang, um, how will you Malac Malacanang reconcile it? And is it possible, kaya po kaya ng industry, ng businesses natin to um, push for a wage hike? Well, meron na po tayong batas tungkol dyan, no? Ang mga regional wage boards po ang magde-decision dyan. Pwede naman pong kahit sino mag-apply for increase in the regional uh, minimum wage if they would want to. Pero gaya ng sinabi mo na rin, no, kinakailangan balansahin natin yan sa katotohanan na because nga of the pandemic, eh, napakadami rin mga negosyo ang nahihirapan kung hindi tuluyan na nagsara. Mm -hmm. Sir, very short lang on um, the tel uh, telco telcos. No? Um, are you, uh, does Malacanang have a target or um, final deadline this year kung kailan po dapat ma-achieve, for example, a specific ranking or a specific speed? Well, uh, ang gagawin ko lang po sa lunes, no? Um, Pipresenta ko lang po itong mga, i-discuss ko po itong rekomendasyon of findings ng NTC and the recommendation of the ICT and I will seek guidance from the President. Thank you, folks. That's all. Thank you, po. Yusek Manika Intik. Yusek. Yes, sir. Okay, ito po, na-experience natin firsthand ang problema natin sa internet connection. We're all in Metro Manila. Eh, ilang beses na po tayo naputol. Ano ba talagang solusyon dito? More towers, more 
more fiber cables and better customer service. Ang question po, when, when, when? <laughs> when, 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 when? It takes time to build, but we love. We help them build. We help them build by making our regulations easy, firm, and uh, faster. Faster ang pampamper. Even your audio, you sa kaintika coming from uh, even your audio is problematic po ah. Um, so anyway, just for your information. Uh, okay, next question please, you say Rocky. Um, you say Rocky please. Opo. Secretary question from um, Prince uh, Prince Goles ng Politiko Abante. Yesterday daw po you offered to mediate talks between Defense Secretary Lorenzana and UP President Concepcion concerning the 1989 accord. Should this materialize? What do you wish to achieve from this conversation? Eh, ako naman po, a good office, we don't need to have a fixed goal. It's for the parties to talk. At ang sabi ko nga po, as a uh, UP graduate, I have never experienced how it is to have military or soldiers on campus. Yun lang po. Opo. The second question po niya, as someone who has spent more than 15 years in UP as a student and another 15, as a professor, do you support the DND's uh, decision to terminate its agreement with UP? Well, sa tagal ko po kasi yung nasa UP, no? since high school pa ako. Itong accord naman po ito, pinirmahan na ng third year law student na po ako. Ibig sabihin, from high school until third year um, law, wala naman po yung accord na yan. At yung mga panahon po niyan, eh, kasagsagan ng aking pagiging aktivista, personally, hindi po ako nagpatinag. Uh, nung panahon na nandyan yung mga posibleng mga uh, kumbaga espiya ng militar, hindi po ako nagpatinag. In fact, yun po yung time na dinibato ko, no less than Amy Marcos, in high school. And one month later, Trahano disappeared. No? May police po noon on campus. Wala naman po. Ang naniniwala ako, dahil nga po dun sa tradisyon ng UP, ng critical thought, ang mga estudyante dyan, patuloy na mananandigan, kahit ano pa po, kung kahit meron o walang mga police. Pero siyempre po, may dahilan din naman, kaya nagkaroon ng ganyang kasunduan, kaya nais kong pag-usapan po sana ng UP at ni Secretary Lorenzana. Thank you, Secretary. Um, yes, Pierre Renata, please. Hello, sir. Yes, go ahead, Anything? please. Sir, uh, three questions for you and then one question for um, Sir Kaintik. Sir, first, uh, last August, the president said that he would he volunteered actually to get vaccinated in public with Russia's vaccine. And, uh, and then um, yesterday or a few days ago, you said that he wants a private vaccination. What led him to change his mind? That's his personal decision. I don't think he has to explain. Hmm. So it's nothing to do with, because he volunteered for a public vaccination because he wanted to say that he's confident that these vaccines are safe and he wanted to encourage people to get vaccinated. This is still, does this goal still not exist it for does. the Kaya nga po, kita nyo na ngayon ang mga public uh, information dissemination natin, no? not only in our uh, presidential press briefings, but also in Laging Handa and uh, in the different programs of PCOO. Sir, uh, does the president plan to call President Biden in the coming days, perhaps to bring up the VFA or other issues? I have no information as of yet. My next meeting with the president is this afternoon, no, where there is an affair concerning the barb. Mm -hmm. um, and then, sir, lastly, uh, you mentioned the meeting you're brokering with Secretary Lorenzana. Sir, does this mean that the that Secretary Lorenzana is actually now open to walking back on his termination of the UPDND accord? No. It doesn't mean anything. Alam mo, pag sinabi mong good offices, wala naman po yan kahit anong prerequisite. It's just an opportunity for to sit down. Pero wala po yung objective, wala po yung uh, waiver of anything. It's done um, principally in uh, um, interstate relations but has also been uh, resorted to even in a domestic seat, uh, setting for purposes of either mediation or conciliation. So, sir, would you say that the likelihood of uh, Secretary Lorenzana changing his mind after the meeting is zero? No, I will okay. not say that until they have mm. actually been able to sit down and talk. Okay. And then uh, next for Sir Kaintik, Sir Manny. Sir, um, I've been asking this of DOH um, through their FOI portal and other officials as well. Even stay safe, sir. And I just wanted to know if um, you can say the details or the date even, just the date na nasign po yung MOA dapat um, that uh, stay safe 
would transfer its users da- the users data uh, sorry multisys would transfer stay safe users data to the government when was this MOA signed is there a MOA the date of donation is still uh, trying to be signed uh, pinapasign pa namin sa DOH pero i think that's quite coming I cannot give you a date yet on that. Wala pa rin naman tinatransfer pa na, na uh, data on that. Okay, because um, I remember yung, yung um, resolution pa ng IETF 42, I believe, 82, it was, it was contingent on that MOA being signed and that date of donation being signed. So how can we push through with the, with the rollout of stay safe? In fact, wala pa palang donation of the use of data. How do you assure citizens that its data is safe? That's the decision of the DIATF, so um, I trust in the wisdom of the body as a whole. So, sir, we violated the IATF resolution? I'm not saying that. Uh, it's just that uh, the decision was to adopt it as well. So, sir, how do we assure citizens now that their users' data is safe? Is it is it currently with Stacey, with Multisys, a private organization, private firm? Right now, po, I think the National Privacy Commission has already been doing ongoing uh, at continuous naman ng kanilang privacy assistance doon sa stay safe. So, maybe you can direct the question to them. Uh, to them. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Pia. We go back to you, Sakraki, please. Yes, uh, Secretary. Question from uh, Tina Mendez ng Philippine Star. Uh, Grab charges were filed against uh, BSB Governor Benjamin Jokno, six officials on the procurement of 116 uh, million a national ID contract and reaction from Malacanang. How will this affect the administration's move to implement the national ID program? Wala naman po, no? Ala, kung maalala nyo, si Governor Jokno until fairly recently was uh, in the cabinet enjoying the full trust and confidence of the president. In fact, he trusted him so much that he promoted him to become central bank governor. So, naninindigan po tayo sa integridad ni uh, um, Governor Jokno at alam naman natin na karapatan na kahit sino magsampan ng kaso pero kampante po kami at nagtitiwala na magbibigay linaw po si uh, um, Governor Jokno sa issue na ito. From Matina uh, Panganibang Perez of GMA7, what is the unemployment situation the point the country right now with the pandemic and uh, what industry sectors are most affected? What assistance can the government give them or uh, is giving them? Hindi ko po memoryado, no? pero ang alam ko po, mula nung nag-ease uh, up tayo at binuksan natin bahagyang etong ekonomiya, parang nangalahati po yung ating unemployment, pero yung kalahating yon ay doble pa rin ang unemployment bago magkaroon ng pandemya. Pero hindi ko lang po maalala kung ano yung uh, figures na yon. Kaya nga po paulit-ulit tayo nagsasabi na pwede po tayo at dapat tayo mabuhay despite and in spite the virus. At kaya naman po natin yan sa pamamagitan ng mask, hugas at iwas. Kinakailangan po pangalagaan natin ang ating kalusugan para sa ating mga hanap buhay. Ingat buhay from, para sa hanap buhay. From Ace Romero, Phil Star, Sen- uh, Secretary Loxin tweeted, Our entire passport revolving fund is gone and we are in arrears to APO, 388 million for printing, passport booklets, apparently the fund was eaten up by travel allowances, insurance uh, miscellany. So bear with us until I find the money to replenish the fund. Ano daw po ang uh, action ng Malacanang on this? Well, we trust that uh, Secretary Locosin can find the funds. No? And I will bring this matter up also to Secretary Avisado. Thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Yusak Rocky. Joseph Morong, please. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, my questions first are on the vaccination schedule of the government. Can you provide us now with the specific um, date of vaccination that the public can expect? Ang sinasabi po ni uh, Secretary Galvez, bagamat merong pecha po yung pagdating ng Sinovac sa February 20, merong pasabilidad na mauna pa ang uh, ilang supplies ng Pfizer dumating kesa sa Pebrero 20. At narinig ko rin po nung uh, huling uh, naging panauhin natin si Secretary Galvez na it would take around 10 days bago mabakunahan ang taong bayan dahil meron silang kinakailangan inventory at pagsisiguro na dapat gawin. No? So um, we can expect na kung mas maaga ang darating sa Pfizer, then meron tayong mauunang bakuna within the month of January. 
kung darating po ng January 20, January baka naman pong uh, pwedeng mapabilisan yung Sinovac para magkaroon tayo ng unang pagturok also within the month of January, which is still feasible kasi sabi niya around 10 days and 10 days after the 20th is still no um, the 31st and we do have the 31st a uh, 31st in this month of January. Uh, meron nga po. Within January, sir? Well, ang aking computation lang po, no? Ah, January tuloy. February pala. Wala palang 31 ng February, no? So, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Wala. January ako ng January. February 20 po kasi yun, no? So, 10 days, eh, baka Marso na kung, uh, kung darating po ng February 20. Pero sana, pa, sana po nga, no? Mapabilisan, no? Para at least within February, may una nang maturukan with Sinovac. Pero kung darating po na mas maaga, yung Pfizer, yung Pfizer. Eh, baka naman po kung earlier, eh, baka yung 10 days requirement, eh, within February pa rin po. I stand corrected. Right. Sorry po. Kaya mali yung count ko ng January. February pa lang. Walang 31. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. So, March, probably yung Sinovac and we're hoping that Pfizer will be earlier and within the month of February, no? Well, libre naman po umasa. So, we're hoping that both we can start in the month of February. Hope lang naman po yun. Okay. So yung 30 to 40 million uh, vaccines from the COVAX facility, wala pa po tayong brand niya, no? Uh, that, sino magde-decide nun? Uh, WHO? Well, ang naunang binitawang salita po ni Secretary Gavis is possibly Pfizer from COVAX. And okay. um, this is um, entitled tayo to 22% um, of our population. No? Pero sinabi rin ni Secretary Gavis, hindi po malakihan ang dating niyan. So, parang tingi-tingi po ang dating niyan, mga tagwa 100,000 a month, thereabouts. No? So, because uh, COVAX, of course, is intended to ensure that all middle income and poor countries have uh, access to the vaccines. At ang okay, latest so balita ko po, bukod dun sa tatlong Western brands, eh, nag-apply na rin po ang tatlong bak bakuna ng China para mapasama po dun sa COVAX facility. Understood. Sir, in terms of deployment, um, kanina diniscuss niyo and diniscuss din ni Secretary Galvez yung, or si Secretary Yusek Berhere, yung storage facility. There are limitations, no? In terms of storing what vaccines. Now, it will matter, I think, no? And, and I don't know if you share the same opinion. It will matter in terms of what vaccines, what ang matatanggap ng mga provinces. So my question, sir, is given the limitations in the storage facilities, what vaccines will go to what provinces? Ang masasabi ko lang po, ang Pfizer, um, and uh, hindi ako sigurado kung Moderna ba. Basta yung negative uh, 70. Basta Pfizer, alam ko sorry. lang yung Pfizer that requires negative 70, Metro Manila, Cebu, and Davao lang po siya mapupunta dahil yun lang merong... Uh, cold storage capacity na up to 70 to 80 degrees negative. No? Pero mm -hmm. yung iba naman po, refrigeration lang. At uh, so, all the other vaccines can be delivered to the other vaccine, to the other provinces. So yun pong halimbawa, Sinovac, Sinopharm, Gamalaya, will go to the other provinces. Opo, limited nga lang po yung Pfizer. Can you check please kung ano pa yung isa na negative 80? Is it uh, Moderna? Kasi pareho silang mRNA. Um, oo. Ang AstraZeneca, alam ko, hindi naman kinakailangan talaga yan. No? I, I think it's only the mRNAs that require negative 70. So to Pfizer and Moderna. Oh, yes. So sir, hindi ba yan parang, well, coming from the public point of view, na parang uh, discrimination? Hindi po. Kasi inexplain okay. po ni Dr. Lulu Bravo, na talagang mRNA that requires negative 70 to negative 80 is really intended for developed countries with cold storage facilities. Talagang hindi po yan for everyone in developing countries that don't have that capacity. In that sense, mm -hmm. it's the science that dictated it. It was not intentional on the part of the manufacturers. But yan okay, nga pong okay. in-explain natin. Bagamat ilan ay um, binabasihan kung anong gusto nilang bakuna, depende kung saan ginawa, Eh, may mga ginagawa po talaga intended for those countries alone. Hindi naman nila inisip na um, ibibigay yan sa mga country na walang uh, infrastructure para tanggapin yung mga bakunang yan. Mm -hmm. So yun sa COVAX fee yan, no? Just so for the record. What about the COVAX fee? Yung matatanggap natin na 30 to 40? Yung pauna po. Pero yun nga po, may negosyasyon tayo, nabibili pa rin tayo, no? 
Uh, wait a minute. Ano ba itong inaabot sa akin? Sa unemployment, no? So, anyway, nasabi ko naman po ito kanina, no? Tama po ako. Um, ang height po nito, masyadong mahaba. Basta alam ko po, uh, at the height of the at the height of the lockdown, um, is the peak nung nagbukas po tayo ng alahate pero yung kalahating yon is still double compared to what we had before the pandemic. So just last two questions. Since the disclosure po, um, uh, si Secretary Galvez has already disclosed to the senators no, na uh, yung prices ng ating mga vaccines. Does it not break the CDA? And what is the difference between disclosing it to the senators and to the public? I, uh, unang -una, I was not privy to that meeting, so I cannot confirm for a fact po. No? I think earlier, si Secretary Galvez was uh, the guest in Laging Handa. I do not know if he confirmed. Uh, but your question is, will it not be a violation? Eh, ang tingin ko naman po, hindi naman po siguro because uh, it was not uh, made public, no? as in to the general public. No? But I do not know if he mm -hmm. actually did. He may have just given also a range. I was not in the meeting, as I said. Okay, ang, ang moderna mapaluho, hindi naman pala po negative 70 negative to 80. 80. It's negative 25 to negative 15 Celsius ang moderna. So it's just Pfizer, yung for urban oh, cities. Pero limitado no? rin for, for po ang areas. ating negative 25 Sir? to negative 15. No? Limitado rin po yan. Mm -hmm. mm, okay. Sir, uh, last na lang. No, we have a new U.S. administration. Um, update, sir. Ano ba yung mga makukuha natin na vaccines from the U.S.? And will a change in the administration affect that commitment or not? I, I don't think it will affect any commitments uh, already negotiated because it's these are in the nature anyway of uh, G2G agreements. No, So summarizing what uh, has been mentioned by Ambassador Romualdez, we can look forward to a supply from Pfizer. We can look forward to 20 million from Moderna. 10, 10 to the private sector and 10 to um, the government sector and the uh, J&J will conduct um, clinical trials in the Philippines. All right, sir. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Yusek Rocky, please. Uh, from uh, Kylie at Kiansan and Business World, Secretary, data from the Department of Budget and Management showed infrastructure and other capital outlays declined by 50% to 40.3 billion pesos in November from 80.9 billion a year ago. Infrastructure spending in November was also 29.4% smaller than the 57 billion spent in October, marking the fifth straight month of year on year decline since June, when it posted a 44.5% annual growth. Also, overall state spending reached 4.2%. 205 trillion pesos at the end of 2020 up to 11 uh, up 11 percent year on year but fell short of its uh, 4.23 trillion target by a uh, 0.66 percent according to preliminary data presented by the finance department on january 12. and question po niya uh, what's the administration response to this alam niyo po ito yung sinasabi ko na bagamat I am the one who broke the tradition of all spokesperson na hindi ko hinihingi ang questions in advance. Pero kung ganito kadetalyado po ang tanong ninyo, paano naman ako sasagot dyan? No? Ang, uh, pero kanina po, ang sinabi ko naman po as far as uh, spending on infrastructure is concerned, um, nag-exceed nga po yung ating infrastructure spending doon sa ating uh, um, actually programmed na 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 this spending. No? Sabi ko po kanina, we actually exceeded the infrastructure program level. In particular, infrastructure disbursements totaled 727.9 billion, which is 4% more than program level of 699.2. Pero yung mga ibang tanong mo, hindi ko po masasagot because I don't have the data. So yung mga ganitong questions po, I will appreciate if you send it to me ahead of time. Kasi yung 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 um, revenues mo hindi ko po masasagot yan kasi i have no data po kung magkano na ang actual revenue collection nating uh, ng ating uh, department of finance no so yung mga ganitong question lang po na detalyado at may mga datos sa kinakailangan please send ahead of time but uh, siguro po on monday our next press briefing yung question mo as about uh, revenues earned yan po yung sasagutin ko next time no 
Okay, Secretary, uh, meron siyang uh, limang questions dito pero basahin ko na lang yung iba baka po kasi may ano, masagot nyo rin. Yung second question niya, how will the Philippine government address underspending especially for infrastructure to realize the potential gains of its ever-increasing budget? As I said, hindi po totoo na merong uh, under state, uh, underspending on infrastructure. Yung ating actual disbursement of funds po eh, exceeded pa our program level. So siguro po ongoing pa rin no? uh, yung mga proyekto nung Disyembre at hindi pa pumapasok ang datos ng Disyembre. So yan po ang explanation. Bagamat aminado tayo, talagang nagkaroon ng delay. Bakit? Eh, kasi pandemya po. Kailan lang naman nagkaroon, nagkaroon ng uh, IATF decision na po pwede nang ituloy, lalong-lalo na yung mga build-build-build projects. No? Nung nasa ECQ po tayo, parang months pang inabot before we ordered that uh, um, construction projects may resume. So talaga pong nagkaroon ng delay, pero kampante naman po tayo, it, is not, it will not translate to underspending because we actually disburse more than what we expected to disburse. Okay, yung third question niya, will the government boost its uh, infraspending in the last few months of the administration? Nakasaad na po yan sa 2021 budget. No? Um, and as usual, build, build, build still um, uh, comprises one of the, our most important strategies um, in our desire to recover from the economic uh, effects of the pandemic. A question from uh, Joe Montemayor. Has uh, President Duterte called up or sent a congratulatory message to President Biden? If he called, when and how long was the talk and uh, what did they talk about? No information, po, but I will ask this afternoon. From Ms. Lerina Monte, during the past few months, there seemed to be improvement on internet services. However, this January, some customers, specifically the PLDT customers, uh, receive messages from uh, Telco that the customers have to upgrade and pay higher amount. Otherwise, they will return to slower internet services kasi tapos na raw ang trial. The customers were surprised to find out that uh, na trial ng pala yung improvement na naramdaman noong mga nakaraang ilang buwan. May rason po ba para taasan ang singil ng mga Telco? Perhaps Yuseka Intik can answer that question. Uh, folks, I will ask the uh, NTC to look into this uh, from their uh, customer complaint section so we can have this uh, answered accordingly. Uh, this is the first time I've heard about it. Uh, as to the question kung dapat na tumahas ang bayad dahil nag-roll nag, nag out ng more, uh, dapat hindi naman. But uh, we will look into this question po, to this complaint. Okay. Um, okay. Question from uh, question from uh, Pia Gutierrez. What uh, does the palace think of the DTI's recommendation to allow children as young as 10 years old to go out to boost consumer spending and help revive the economy? This will be discussed uh, in this afternoon's meeting of the IATF. Opo. From Sam Medanilla, question for you sa kaintik lang po. Magkoconduct pa po kaya ng another round of assessment ng NTC or DICT sa performance ng telcos later this year? Will the government still consider the nationalization of communication services after po mag-improve ang telco services? Uh, as to the, to the uh, uh, survey, of course, that will now be a yearly thing. As uh, to nationalization, uh, hindi po natin yan angarin. Uh, we are trying to build the national broadband, but that's for the purpose of the national government agencies, LGUs, and its government instrumentality. Thank you po. Opo. Um, second question po niya, kailan po expected na makomplete ang joint memorandum circular for fiber optic installation? That will be, that's ongoing already for first quarter. We're doing this with the anti red tape authority, the DILG, the Board of Investment. Okay. So, ang, ang katlo po niyang tanong, uh, update daw po sa implementation ng National Broadband Project of the Department of Information and Communication. Meron na po kayang timeline for the said project. 
Ongoing po ang phase 1. Uh, was expected to complete the phase 1 by July of this year. Uh, that, that will be lighting up a uh, 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 government-owned uh, fiber infrastructure from Lawag to NCR. Thank you. Opo, tanong, tanong po sa inyo, Yusek and Tik, ni Jump Punsala ng ABS-CBN, how much will government spend to help telcos improve their internet infrastructure aside from uh, streamlining uh, permit processes? How will regulators help uh, firms further uh, boost our internet speed? Uh, hindi po trabaho, uh, hindi po budget ng government ang pag to invest in the public franchises, no? Uh, such as the private entities. Uh, that's the that's an investment on their on their part. Trabaho po ng government is to invest in its own infrastructure for its own proprietary use. By doing so, we are actually spurring the demand as well and it could actually help them expand to areas wherein ang tinatawag natin are missionary sites. Places like wherein it's not economically feasible for them to expand. That's our objective. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Yusek. I take for Secretary Roque, question for from uh, Sherry Ann Torres of ABS-CBN. Reaction daw po sa sinabi ni Secretary Carlito Galvez na hindi totoo na pinag-walk out siya sa Senate hearing as was claimed yesterday. Hindi ko po alam kung sino nag-claim na nag-walk out siya. Dahil ang sinabi ko po dito uh, is a specific instruction from the President. But I never said anyone walked out and I never said anyone will walk out. So hindi po ako yung tinutukoy. Okay. Thank you, Secretary Roque. Okay. Maraming salamat po dahil wala na po tayong mga katanungan. Uh, maraming salamat sa ating mga kasama sa Malacanang Press Corps. Maraming salamat, Yusek Rocky. And thank you, Yusek Kaintik. Sana po, eh, bago matapos ang termino ng uh, ating presidente, kung meron pang pandemya, eh, at least sa Metro Manila, hindi na po mapuputol yung aming mga uh, interlink, yung mga internet connection pag kami po ay nagpe-press briefing. So ang problema po talaga ng telecoms, ramdam ng lahat, pati po dito sa seat of power na Malacanang Palace. So with these notes, ang alam po na ating Presidente Rodrigo Roa Duterte, ito po yung Spox Harry Roque yung nagsasabi, ang pangako ng Presidente, kinakailangan komportable ang taong bayan. At ang ating internet connection, ang telekomunikasyon, hindi na po yan pribilihiyo, yan po ay kinikilala na nakarapatang pantao. Asahan niyo po, hindi matatapos ang termino ng Presidente na hindi po mabibigyan ng mas epektibo, mas mabilis na serbisyo at mas mabuting serbisyo ng telecoms ang taong bayan. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat.